Hey folks, Colin here from Sparing Outdoors and this is a slightly different video for me to upload. It's about a very hot topic here in Ireland at the minute and it's about dogs on leads on open mountain or on mountain trails or dogs not on leads on open mountain and trails. So there seems to be a big debate in Ireland going on at the minute, especially there's a particular forum that I follow on Facebook and there seems to be an argument between the two people. There's people who keep their dogs in leads when going through open mountain ground or mountain walks and stuff with their sheep and there's other people who want their dogs to go through the ground without being in a leash because they'll do no harm. They're a good dog. And there seems to be these people who generally want the dogs to run free and people who keep them under control with a lead. And that seems to be the debate that's raging at the minute. So I'm going to give my opinion on this topic and explain, try and back up my opinion with a few examples. And if you want to have a wee healthy debate under my in my comments, by all means have a good debate, but be respectful of each other. I'm not we're not I'm not here to alienate anybody or make people feel bad. I'm just making want people to think. To think. Maybe rethink their ways of going on the mountain. But I just want people to think and discuss among each other. We're all friends here. We're not here to fight with each other and just keep the debate healthy and um, respectful. And if you're going to give a good point, try and back up the point with a bit of evidence because it just gets people thinking, you know. But anyway, on, the, on this uh, particular forum, lots of people follow out about this particular topic about people going on the mountains and letting the dogs off the lead. In my opinion on it is if you're taking a dog on a mountain or anywhere where there's especially sheep at this time of year, lambing season, is keep a dog on the lead would be my opinion. Now I have a wee dog, I'm an avid dog lover. I love my dog so much. And I've always had a dog and I've grew up with dogs. But I've also, I see the other side of the thing, thing my father-in-law is a farmer. And he's lots of sheep and he's got cows. My father's side and my mother's side both came from farms and my granny and granddad's all had farms. So I grew up in them farms messing about and helping with sheep and, and just enjoying myself out in the farm. So was, I see both the vides here being a dog lover and working on a farm and helping with sheep and that. And I also live in a, quite a rural area. You'll see a wee video at the start there which I showed you where I live and I, it is out in the hills and there's sheep everywhere. I live in a predominantly upland area with lots of sheep. So I've got a good spectrum of both cases for the, the complete dog lovers. I'm a dog lover myself, and, and, and but there's a lot of people here who are complete dog lovers who like their dog off a lead. But I'm a dog lover who likes to keep his dog on a lead. Well, it's just even a forest trail. And now my, my opinion this is, because I can see this very clearly, even just walking down the road with a dog, now, if I walk down the early road there, country road dog, there's sheep in the fields, you'd say to you. If I walk down myself, the sheep will look at you, but they'll not really pay much attention to you. They'll, they'll just munch away at their grass and they'll keep an eye on you, but they'll not really be that interested in you unless you get a wee bit close to mate's camper. The only time they're interested with you is if you've got a bag or a bucket because they think you're going to feed them a bit of meal. That's the only time they're really interested in you. The other time is when you walk down there and have a dog on a lead. Now the sheep, you can see a lot of the sheep change when they see you with a dog. Now when I'm walking down there with the dog, the sheep take a lot more notice of the dog than they do of me. Now they'll glance at me a lot, but they seem to keep a tighter eye on the sheep, or sorry, keep a tighter eye on the dog. They'll look at the dog, they keep a real tight eye on the dog till we pass. And you can see it changes sheep when I do have a dog, and it doesn't really matter what size the dog is. My dog's tiny; it's a wee Yorkshire Terrier, but they still seem a bit uneasy with the dog. Even my dog won't go near sheep; they're just too big. <laughs> but I have it in the lead, and I take it down. The sheep look at it, and I can see where the sheep's point of view. You've got to look at it from a sheep's point of view. So you have to look at this from a sheep's point of view, which is. Um, I suppose their instincts are kicking in. They see a dog, no matter the size. Obviously, bigger dogs are scarier. But they're looking at a dog. You know, this thing's got sharp teeth, four legs, and it's not a sheep. It's looking like, no, these sharp teeth, this could hurt me. It's, this, it's looking, this is a predator. This could eat me. This could do some damage to me. So the sheep's starting to worry. I think it's just instincts from when 
maybe the sheep were wild or whatever, weren't, weren't as domesticated where there was wolves and things, there was predators. So that's instinct still in the sheep, is still ingrained in them. So they see the dog as a massive threat and they keep a tight eye on the dog. Now, when people say, well, what difference does it mean keeping the dog, taking, keep, keeping the dog on the lead and off the lead, it's going to worry the sheep just as much on the lead as it is off the lead. Not true. My opinion is the dog will still worry sheep on a lead. The sheep are still aware the dog's there and they're still a bit freaked out that there is a dog there. But there's less chance of it worrying the sheep. The two, you have the dog under control. The dog can't go anywhere. Well, the dog's just an excitable, playful git of a dog. It just wants to gape about. Or whether it is a vicious dog and has to be on a lead. The difference being, if it's a gape of a dog and it's going to do no harm, it's not paying any interest sheep, you've got to look at this again from the sheep's point of view. If this dog is in front of you on a mountain walk or just walking down the road, but we were, we're specifically just talking about mountain walks here, but if that dog, you're on the mountain and your dog's off the lead and you know your dog's not going to touch sheep, it, there's no interest in sheep and you know that as the owner, the sheep don't know that. So your dog could be gliding along in front of you, just running and having the time as lay back in the gate, just running up the path and not paying any interest to sheep. The sheep don't know that. The sheep are looking at this dog. This dog's running. Who's it running after? What's it running after? Who's it going to attack? Is it going to attack one of, to attack one of my friends in the flock? It doesn't know what the dog's going to do. It sees a dog running. The sheep instinctively want to run and get away from it because it's scared. Even though the dog's not interested in the sheep, the sheep want to run because this dog's flying. It's running away because it's scared. So the sheep just want to get away. Now, especially in lambing season, the, the, the sheep could abort the lambs. And, and that's not good for the farmer. The also thing is, if you had your dog on the lead walking through the mountain, the sheep will still see the dog, and there's, it's not saying it'll not worry the sheep, but it might worry the sheep less. Because if you watch, the sheep will see the dog, but the dog's not running. You have the dog under control on the lead. The dog's not galloping by on the path and having the time of its life. Still having a great time out in the walk, doing its smells and lifting his leg to everything, whatever. It's still having a great time. But the sheep can see, you know, that dog's not moving anywhere fast. It's less threatening because it's not in flight. So the dog's not running. The sheep are a wee bit more, they're still a bit wary of the dog, but they're a wee bit more at ease because the dog's not running and they can sort of see it's under control. It's coming slowly, walking along with its owner up a mountain where it's not blazing by running, having the time of its life. So the sheep worry less. The sheep will still worry. That's not, not in question. The sheep will still worry. And some sheep still might run. But there's less chance of that happening. If the dog's on a lead. And the second thing about, and another thing that I think why the dog should be on the lead is, you might know your dog, and you have all these dog owners that say, that know their dogs. I know my little dog, and I would say I know it 100%, but at the end of the day, it's still a dog. It's still his instincts. My wee dog wouldn't touch a sheep, it wouldn't touch any, anything bigger, but in all fairness, it would attack smaller animals, because it's a wee terror, it would attack mice, rats, birds, squirrels, it will attack any fair game, because it's, it's instinct and so even when I'm walking my dog through forest, I try to keep it on a lead just for them things because I love wildlife. Now, the other thing there being, you might know your dogs to so say if you've got a, I don't know, an Akita or a big husky or something like that, and you know it's a lovable dog and it won't attack sheep. But it could be that one time where it's running up a mountain having the time of its life and it sees a sheep just running in front of it. It might want to attack the sheep. But instincts might come, it might just kick in on the dog just that one time and decide, you know what, I want to run after the sheep, it's fun. Instincts might just say, might say to the dog, just this minute in time, everything's just added up for it to be right. And the dog said, no, I'm going to run after the sheep. It might just decide to run after the sheep, it mightn't attack the sheep. But again, the sheep doesn't know that, and that's worries the sheep. Once you get, sheep tend to follow each other, so one, one sheep panics, the rest of the sheep panic. And it's mayhem, and it, it, just by that one sheep running, it could cause loads of sheep to abort, depending, you know, on what way it was panicking. So, by keeping your dog in lead, you're taking that 1% that the dog's instinct could kick in to have a bit of fun with the sheep, or it might, uh, instinct could kick in, it might attack a sheep, it might never, but that 1% the instinct could kick, kick in, whatever the... Whatever the reasons and situations that will have a lane for the dog's instinct to kick in on this particular time, it could happen. You could have took your dog up, up this particular mountain 20 times and no one's ever happened and suddenly this one time is just out of character for the dog and just, just done something. It might happen. It might never happen. So that's another reason why you should keep it in the lead. Another reason there, what I think is, if you're going on, this comes with a question, you can't even argue this one. If you're coming on to the land, especially in the sparings, all the land is privately owned. 
So farmers own the land, it's their land, and they tolerate hill walkers if you abide by their rules, which is fair enough, their land. Some of the rules you'll disagree with, whether they're right or wrong, you still have to agree to their rules because it's their land. And if it says on the, the route that you're walking that dogs have to be kept on leads, simple as guys, dogs on leads. Dogs have to be kept on leads. If it's on the farmer's land and he says dogs on leads, you can't dispute that fact. The dog has to go on a lead. No matter whether the farmer's right or wrong, you have to you have to uphold his wishes. Because all you're doing is if you continue to flaunt that and he continues to see that you're on his land with the dog off a lead, well there's no sheep on the land or not, the farmer could just say, you know what, I've had enough of this rubbish. I'm closing my land for people to walk on. And all you've done, you've destroyed for people who maybe don't have dogs or people who adhere to the rules with walking the dogs. So you've now just destroyed it for everybody. They can't walk the land. So if there's a sign saying dogs on leads, keep the dogs on leads. You can't dispute that one, whether the farmer's right or wrong. Um, all our people have been saying on it, oh, my dog won't touch, you know, we've got, we've got farm animals around home, we keep a wee homestead, and, you know, my dog's beautiful around animals, gentle giant, loves animals and plays them, and there's no damage, it doesn't hurt them. That might be so, your animals might be used to your dog, but all our farmers' animals might not be used to your dog or any dog. So that reasoning has just been ruled out straight away, just because your dog's very happy to be around your animals, and your animals are obviously very used to being around dogs and your dog, they're at ease with the dog, but that doesn't mean everybody else's animals on the mountain are used to dogs. So that theory is out the window. You can't use that theory saying my dog's good around my animals. That may be so, and your animals are used to your dog, but that doesn't mean the farmer's animals are used to your dog or any dog. So that 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 that's disputed there. That one's gone. You can't use that one. Um, it's the same thing again with dogs. Like children, you see a, a dog running by. I have a wee nephew who is petrified of dogs, absolutely frightened of them. He sees a dog at all, he wants to scamper. He runs away, he hides. And, you know, and you, you see a lot of dog owners at this stage, you know, when they see what they realise is happening, you know, this wee guy's scared, you know, they'll, they'll try and get their dog under control because it's scaring the wee. And it's the same with the sheep. The sheep are petrified of dogs a lot of the time, so it's, just, it's the same reasoning. If you're going to not want to scare a wee child, it's not going to do the child any harm, but the child's scared. Dog owners seem to want to get the dog under control because it's setting the in. It's the same thing that's happening in the sheep. You know, the sheep are just as scared of that dog as, as the child. Only the sheep is, could have could be in lamb, could lose lamb, which is not great. Now, whether you agree with farmer, now this is not about, I don't want people to go into this debate on the comments about, you know, farming's wrong or going into vegan debates and stuff. This is not about that. This is about dog walking, about dogs on leads and dogs off leads. So we don't want to spiral out into any oral debates. That's a debate for another time. Um, so that's really my opinion on the thing. My opinion is dogs should be kept on leads on the mountain, especially during lambing time. It puts the farmer who owns the land puts his mind at ease, he can see that the dog's on lead, it's under control, so he's happy to let you run through his land. Um, you're also, your mind's also at ease, because you're now, when I'm walking this land, I've respected the farmer's food, I'm not going to get any flack from the farmer, because I have adhered to his rules, so you're at ease that way. The sheep's also a little bit at ease, because you've got the dog under control. Again, it mightn't stop them from being worried, but it lessens the chances of them being attacked, or being more worried. Whether your dog's good or not. Um, so I want you to have a healthy debate to see what you think on this particular topic. Um, I love my dog so much. I've always had a dog and I love animals. And it's nothing nicer than letting your dog run free and enjoy it. I take my dog to the odd, the odd beach there sometimes and let her run around and it's great. And there's some forest where I can let her run around and run when there's no sheep. But I still, I have all in my head when I do let her off a lead, I have always just worried you know, she's going to attack something, you know, whether it's just a wee, a wee squirrel or a rabbit or something. Generally, she hasn't really attacked anything. Actually, she has never attacked anything when I've been out in a walk. But down her garden, she will take an odd bird and things like that down her garden. 
but I can't stop that. It's her area. So I've always just been thinking in my mind, you know, keeping that, keep always keep a tight eye on her. But generally, she's pretty good. But on the open mountain, when there's sheep, they're everywhere, and there's the sheep are a bit more um, used to humans, so you get closer to them with the dog. And the, but but I'm saying that the sheep are slightly different than the wild animals because the sheep is somebody's business. It's a farmer's job, it's his livelihood, so if you upset his sheep, you could be eating, you could be destroying his business a bit by getting a sheep to abort. So, you're not just not adhering to the rules, you're, you're, you're affecting somebody's business. That's like me and my shop, if someone came in and stole some of my clothes, it's effectively what you're doing to the farmer, he's losing a sheep. The lamb. And... You know, it's not right to steal from, say, my shop. You're not right to go in and lift a pile of stuff and run. So why should it be right to worry, um, I suppose, the farmer sheep and make them lose sheep? That's it. That's all I want to say, guys. Just be respectful in the comments. Give, just write what you think and we'll see how it goes from there. Be respectful in the comments. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Just getting you to think about when you're taking your dogs on the hills to be um, more mindful whether your dog should be on a lead or not. My opinion is the dog should be on a lead on all cases, just so it prevents any problems at all. But I have a healthy debate and we'll see how it goes. Cheers guys, thanks for watching and I hope I didn't annoy anybody or offend anybody. That wasn't the intention of it, it was just to get people thinking and have a debate. Cheers guys.